What's up everybody, blessed be, my name is Manon and you are watching Witch in the Working where we will be discussing all things witchy in and around, throughout and about, above, below, and beyond. Please visit me on my other platforms as well, including Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon, all linked down in the description below. The full script to this video and most of the others is available on my Patreon account for download if desired to build your Witch in the Working book of shadows. Also, please visit my Shopify store listed in the description below to get your Witch in the Working shirts, mugs, stickers, bags, beanies, or what have you. So. In this world of magic and mayhem that we all so dearly love and embrace, there are a ton of methods, mechanisms, and practices that we utilize to achieve our magical goals and journeys. From the use of poppets, candles, and sachets, to complexities such as talismans, amulets, and sigils, we have a plethora of tools available to us in our witchy concoctions. Throughout our spells, rituals, tools, and even our gemstones and gadgetry, these things all have one common thing that is almost always included in any decision-making process before we actually start placing the building blocks in alignment with our journey at hand. This one thing is color. Think about it. Almost everything we utilize in magic, whether in spells or rituals, involves choosing the correct color to work with for the task at hand. In this episode of Witch in the Working, we're going to be talking all about color, color magic, and even how to attune yourself and your energies to be more in tune with the spectrum of magic and mystery. So without further ado, let's get into it and roll the intro. Welcome back, everybody. Have you ever noticed how a particular color can stir specific emotions or thoughts within you? Or how certain colors can seemingly resonate with your state of mind or aspirations? This isn't a mere coincidence. It's a testament to the fundamental principles of color magic. Color magic, in essence, is a branch of magical practice that involves harnessing the vibrational energies of different colors to bring about desired effects. This concept transcends the visual appeal of colors and delves into their symbolic meanings, psychological impacts and spiritual energies. Each color in the spectrum carries its unique vibrational frequency, and these frequencies are thought to correspond with specific energies in the universe. Color magic practitioners recognize these connections and use colors as powerful tools in their rituals, spells, and spiritual practices. To understand color magic, it's essential to understand that everything in the universe is energy. This includes colors. While we see colors as merely light being reflected off surfaces in reality, each color is a specific frequency of light and light is energy. Therefore, colors are different forms of energy that we perceive visually. Color magic operates on the belief that by intentionally using specific colors in our practices, we can tap into and manipulate these color energies to our advantage. This use of color can take many forms, from the color of candles used in a ritual, the color of the robe worn by the practitioner, to the color of ink used to inscribe a spell. Moreover, the practice of color magic is not exclusive to any one tradition or path. It's a universally accessible practice that anyone can incorporate into their personal spiritual journey, regardless of their chosen path. Whether you're a solitary witch working with nature magic or a ceremonial magician performing complex rituals, color magic offers an extra layer of symbolism and power to your workings. At its core, color magic is about deepening our connection to the energies around us and harnessing them in our spiritual journey. By understanding and using the vibrational power of colors, we can enhance our magical practices, engage more deeply with, uh, with the world around us, and enrich our personal spiritual experiences. Color, with its mesmerizing ability to evoke emotions and symbolize various aspects of life, has played an essential role in human civilization since the dawn of time. It's no wonder, then, that color magic has rich historical roots spanning across cultures, eras, and continents. Let's take a journey back in time to explore the fascinating evolution in application of color magic throughout history. Ancient cultures held a deep appreciation for the symbolic and spiritual power of color. For example, in ancient Egypt, colors were not only used for artistic purposes, but they were also deeply symbolic, imbued with specific spiritual and magical properties. Green, Waj was associated with fertility and the rebirth of the soul, while red, desher, 
often represented chaos and disorder. In ancient China, the practice of feng shui incorporated colors to balance the energies in one's environment. Five key elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water, were associated with certain colors, and these colors were used strategically in people's homes and temples to promote harmony and prosperity. During the Middle Ages and Renaissance, colors continued to hold symbolic and magical significance. In alchemy, an early form of spiritual and physical transformation practice, colors were crucial. The magnum opus, or the great work of spiritual enlightenment and the creation of the Philosopher's Stone was expressed through a series of color changes, each representing a specific stage in the process. In the Americas, Native American tribes used color extensively in their rituals and symbolism. Colors represented directions, spirits, and other natural elements, and they were often incorporated into sacred ceremonies and artworks. With the rise of the New Age movements in the 20th century, color magic experienced a revival. Today, it forms an integral part of various spiritual practices, including witchcraft, Wicca, and other modern pagan paths. Practitioners use color in various ways, from casting spells and crafting charms to setting up altars and practicing divination. Whether it's through the green of healing rituals, the red of love and lust spells, the black of protection amulets, or the blue of peace and calming, color magic continues to infuse modern practices with the vibrational energies of the universe. Color magic's rich and diverse history highlights the universal and timeless human fascination with color. As mentioned, from the tombs of ancient Egypt to the temples of China, from from the alchemical laboratories of medieval Europe to the ceremonial grounds of Native American tribes, color magic has found expression and purpose. As we continue to explore and harness the power of color in our modern practices, we become part of this vibrant historical tapestry, linking us to our ancestors and the universal human conquest for connection, transformation, and understanding. Let's look at the theory of color and magic. Color is more than just a feast for the eyes. It's a language that speaks directly to our souls. Within the context of magic, Magical practices, color plays an essential role, steeped in symbolism and bursting with spiritual, emotional, and psychological significance. To understand the depth of color magic, we must delve into its foundational theory. The first step towards understanding the theory of color and magic lies in recognizing colors as, dis as distinct frequencies of light. When white light, such as sunlight, hits a prism, it refracts into a spectrum of colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Each of these colors represents a different frequency of light and thus different energy levels. In the context of magic, practitioners believe that tapping into these unique energy frequencies can influence our surroundings and our inner selves. In magical traditions, colors are closely associated with the classical elements, earth, air, fire, and water. Each element corresponds to different colors. For instance, green and brown are often associated with earth, symbolizing stability and growth. Yellow and light blue are linked to air, representing communication and intellect. Fire corresponds to red and orange, indicating passion and transformation, while water is associated with deep blue and aqua, embodying emotions and intuition. The colors in magic are also often tied to the body's chakras or energy centers. Each of the seven main chakras corresponds to a color from the spectrum, starting from red at the base chakra, uh, moving through the colors of the rainbow, and ending with violet or white at the crown chakra. The health and balance of these chakras are believed to be connected with the person's physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Beyond the tangible and metaphysical connections, colors carry profound symbolic meanings in magical practices. These meanings can vary across different cultures and traditions, but some universal associations persist. For instance, black is often associated with protection and banishing negativity, while white can symbolize purity and higher spiritual attunement. Red often stands for passion and courage, and green is linked with prosperity and fertility. Given these theoretical underpinnings, colors serve as practical tools in magic. By incorporating specific colors in spells, rituals, or even everyday life, practitioners can intentionally tap into the energy frequencies, elemental connections, chakra influences, and symbolic meanings of those colors. This could be as simple as choosing a specific color of candle for a spell, wearing certain color clothing to enhance an intention, or decorating a space in hues that invite the desired energies. The theory of color in magic is a fascinating blend of science, symbolism, and spirituality. It forms a key component of the magical framework, uniting the visible world with the unseen realms of energy and intention. Whether you're a seasoned practitioner or a curious newcomer, understanding the theoretical foundations of color and magic offers a vibrant, powerful lens to view and influence the world around and within us. So how would we use colors in ritual and spells? Colors with their distinct frequencies and symbolic meanings have been long incorporated into the spiritual practices of people worldwide. The vibrant 
vibrant hues in our surroundings aren't just visually appealing, they are pulsating with energy, awaiting the chance to channel their unique power into our magical workings. In the realm of rituals and spells, colors can be instrumental in shaping in, uh, the desired outcomes and attuning us to the energies we aim to attract. Let's delve into the ways colors are used in ritual and spells, lending their vibrancy to our intentions. One of the most common uses of color in rituals and spells is through candle magic. Each color represents certain properties and forces. By choosing a candle of a particular color, we seek to invoke its associated energies. For example, a practitioner might choose a green candle to manifest prosperity or a blue one for a healing spell. Maybe they would choose a pink candle for love energy or a purple candle for connecting to the higher self. If you're ever at a loss about a certain color or what to use for a certain act of magic, it's a simple solution. Always go with white. White is universal and can be used for just about any magical intention when you're in, you know, when you're in a bind. Um, it's mainly because white consists of the full spectrum, so it has all the colors in it. So when you're in a tough situation, just use white. The altar, a sacred space for many practitioners, is another area where colors play a significant role. Colors can be incorporated through the use of altar cloths, candles, flowers, crystals, and symbolic objects. The chosen colors typically correspond to the intention of the ritual, the deity being honored or the current season or Sabbath. I have a video all about altars and sacred spaces linked here and also down in the description below. Check it out. Many practitioners also use colors in their ritual garb or robes, aligning their personal energy with their intent. A practitioner might wear a red robe for a love spell, a green one for a fertility ritual, or a purple one for a psychic development and meditation. Then of course, there's those of us who don't wear in, in any robes or clothing of any sorts in the circle, but an interesting twist is body paint. I have seen many of sky clad circles that incorporated body paint on bare naked bodies. Colors also find their way into spells through the use of herbs, crystals, cords and knot magic, ink for inscribing sigils, or colored paper for writing spells. The selected colors again align with the purpose of the spell. Many times with the extreme abundance of magic oils available today, especially those created for sale to others, are colored or dyed to the specific color to match the function of the oil's magical purpose. For instance, most money drawing oils are colored green, and many love attracting oils are colored pink or red. In magic, visualization is a powerful tool, and color plays a part in this mental imagery. If you're working a spell for peace, you might visualize a soothing blue light enveloping you. For a love spell, you could picture a vibrant pink light radiating from your heart. As some of you know from many of my path workings, I kick each one off with a sort of grounding and centering, which involves envisioning a soft blue slash white light overcoming your body for a centering, cleansing, and grounding purpose. Why blue white? Because I like that combination and I was taught that this is the color of the energy of a witch at some point. So I automatically default to this in my visions. And I learned that early on in my career about that being the color of the energy of a witch. Um, is it set in stone? Absolutely not. Um, you use what goes good with you. That's just what I use. In many traditions, when casting a circle, practitioners will visualize a color that corresponds to their purpose. This reinforces their intention and infuses the circle with the energy of the chosen color, as well as the quarters of a circle have their color associations. For most, it's yellow in the east, red in the south, blue in the west, and green in the north. Certainly not all though. Each traditional or eclectic practice can have their own preference for whatever reasoning that suits them. Incorporating color into rituals and spells isn't about rigid rules. It's about personal resonance and intention. The use of color can enhance our magical workings, making them more potent and aligned with our desired outcomes. It connects us to the rich tapestry of nature and the cosmos, reminding us that we are part of a vibrant, colorful universe. As you weave your spells and conduct your rituals, make sure the colors you choose illuminate your path, amplify your intentions, and bring a touch of vibrancy to your magic that works for you. Colors in their infinite variety hold a revered place in the practice of witchcraft and Wicca. Each hue on the spectrum is believed to carry specific vibrations and symbolic associations, influencing our subconscious and connect us with the surrounding energies. Understanding color correspondences, the unique meanings and attributes associated with each color, allows practitioners to more intentionally select and utilize color in their magical practices. We're going to explore the traditional color correspondences for several key colors in Witchcraft and Wicca. White. The combination of all colors in the spectrum is universally associated with purity, divinity, and spiritual enlightenment. It symbolizes new beginnings, protection, and peace. In magic, white can be a stand-in for any other color, making it exceptionally versatile. 
Contrary to some popular misconceptions, black in witchcraft is not synonymous with evil or negativity. Instead, it represents protection, banishing, absorption of negative energy, and breaking free from bad habits. It's a color of strength, empowerment, and transition. Brown, the color of the earth, is linked to stability, grounding, and abundance. It's often used in rituals and spells concerning home protection, locating lost items, and promoting concentration and decision making. Yellow, with its connection to the sun and light, signifies intellect, creativity, and communication. It's also associated with confidence and inspiration, and sometimes travel. In magic, it's often used in spells concerning learning, persuasion, and quick thinking. Blue, reminiscent of the sky and sea, is associated with healing, tranquility, truth, and wisdom. Light blue is often used for peace and patience, while dark blue corresponds to deeper healing and truth-seeking spells. Orange is a color of attraction, encouragement, and stimulation. It carries with it an energetic vibration that can boost social interactions, joy, and success. It's often used in spells that involve creativity, legal matters, and ambition. I'm sure many of you have seen cylinder candles in the witchcraft stores that have two colors in them, for instance, orange and like one half is orange and the other half is green. This is a money attraction candle because it's using the color um, orange to attract and the color green for money. Pink is the color of emotional love, friendship and compassion. It's often used in spells for romantic love, self-love, nurturing and reconciliation. It's softer than red and can help in areas of emotional healing. Red is a powerful fiery color uh, associated with passion, courage and strength. In magic, it's often used in love spells, courage boosting rituals and workings that um, require a bit of motivational kick. Purple, a blend of calming blue and energetic red, is associated with spiritual power, psychic abilities, and higher consciousness. It's often used in divination, meditation, and spiritual growth rituals. Green is the color of fertility, prosperity, and growth. Connected with nature and the element of earth, it's used in spells for money, luck, health, and personal growth. Color correspondences in Witchcraft and Wicca offer a vibrant language for expressing and manifesting intentions. As you explore these color connections, remember that personal associations are just as important, if not more so, than traditional ones. Your own experiences and feelings towards a color can enhance or alter its magical impact. As you dance with the palette of your practice, let these correspondences guide you, but also let your intuition paint with, um, with its own vibrant strokes. Let your magic be as rich, varied, and colorful as the universe itself. Um, for instance, I mean, the quarter colors change all the time for depending on where, you know, what tradition you work with or what practice you work with. And even books you read, so many times the colors change in per, um, per, the, uh, per the directions. Um, some people even do it, um, change the colors as per where they live. You know, um, you know if they had... Like traditionally, well, they'll say traditionally, like the color to of water is to the west and it's blue. But someplace you might live, like, you know, the water's directly to the east of you and there's nothing but miles and miles and miles of land to the west. So some people even say like east is water, which, you know, I tend to stick to traditional values. I stick, I always have and always will stick to east, yellow, air, south, fire, red, west um blue and water and north green and earth i mean that's just what i'll always have and that's pretty i think pretty much traditional with most people in the realm of color magic an often overlooked but incredibly potent tool at our disposal is colored lighting by bathing in the light of different colors we can immerse ourselves in the specific vibrations and energies of those colors thus influencing our moods thoughts and overall energy we're gonna look at how to use colored light bulbs effectively to explore and harness the diverse energies of color in your personal and magical life. The first step is to obtain colored light bulbs or LED lights that can change color. These can be found in most home supply stores or online. It's most efficient and much more cost effective nowadays to just get a single color changing LED bulb. These bulbs can be controlled via a phone app or included wireless remote to in fact make the bulb any of hundreds of combinations in different intensities of color. Choose a space where where you will use your colored lights. This could be a dedicated ritual space, a room for relaxation, or even your bedroom. Ensure the area is clean and comfortable and consider removing other sources of light to allow the colored light to fully permeate the space. Choose the color of your light based on your intent. Refer back to the color correspondences mentioned earlier or just look it up on the internet or whatever book you might have. For example, if you're seeking calm and tranquility, you might choose a blue light. If you're looking to stimulate creativity, an orange or yellow light might 
might be you know, more beneficial. Turn on your colored light bulb and allow the room to be bathed in its glow. Sit or lie down comfortably in the light, letting your eyes gently absorb the color. Pay attention to how the color makes you feel, both physically and emotionally. As you bathe in the colored light, consider using meditation techniques to further explore the color's energy. Visualize the color's light filling your body and surrounding your aura. Imagine this light vibrating, aligning your personal energy with the color's specific frequency. Color lighting can also enhance your rituals and spells. For instance, you might use a green light during a prosperity spell, a pink or red light for love spells, or a purple light for enhancing spiritual connections. This can amplify your intentions and deepen your connection to the spell work. As you explore different colors, consider keeping a journal to document your experiences. Record how each color makes you feel and any effects you notice after the light bathing session, for instance. Over time, this can help you identify which colors most resonate with you. Using colored light bulbs for color magic is a unique immersive way to explore and harness the energies of different hues. Whether you use them for relaxation, meditation, or enhancing your magical workings, colored lights offer an enchanting way to connect with the powerful spectrum of color vibrations. As with all magical practices, personalize this technique to suit your needs and preferences, and let your intuition guide you in your colorful journey. Magical practitioners often strive to attune themselves more deeply to the subtle energies that surround us, and color magic offers a vibrant path towards this goal. By learning to feel the unique vibrations of different colors, we can enhance our sensitivity and understanding of these energies. This next piece describes a group exercise um, designed for a coven that I used to do with my personal coven back in the day. In this technique, members attempt to sense the color of light while blindfolded. It's a fun, illuminating activity that can deepen your coven's exploration of color magic. Just set up in a space suitable for your coven to comfortably gather, like your circle area for instance. Get a lamp with a color changing LED light and place it in the center of the room. Gather your coven and explain the purpose of the exercise to heighten awareness of color energies and vibrations. Discuss color correspondences briefly and encourage everyone to keep an open mind. Distribute blindfolds amongst the members. Once everyone is comfortably seated, instruct them to put on their blindfolds. Turn on a colored light bulb. Ask your coven members to quiet their minds and tune into the energy in the room. Encourage them to notice any feelings, images, or sensations that arise. After a few minutes, ask the members to sense the color of the light and write down their guess on a piece of paper. Have everyone remove their blindfolds and reveal the color. Allow a period of discussion about everyone's experiences and perceptions. Were some colors easier to sense than others? Were there any common themes or sensations for particular colors? So repeat this exercise with different colors, following the same process each time. This color perception exercise can be a powerful tool for your coven, allowing members to develop their sensitivity to color energies and deepen their understanding of color magic. It's a bonding experience that encourages openness, trust, and mutual exploration. Exploration. Remember that the goal isn't necessarily to get it right, but rather to expand each member's perception and intuitive understanding of color energies. Well, that's going to wrap up this episode of Witch in the Working. How do you feel about utilizing color in ritual and magic? Do you have any tips or tricks to help expand your magical awareness of the different colors and how they're used? Let us all know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to ring that little bell to be reminded of the wonderful and exciting future episodes to come. I love you guys and gals. Blessed be.